Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Coming off a of Thursday night where we broke even in college football. Hit the bet of the day, but we lost two half unit plays. Uh, but we're putting it in the past because we got a loaded Saturday here. Got a nice big 12 game for you here. Iowa State versus Baylor. Let's talk about it. Welcome to The Source. The Source. Hey, get the sewers. All right, Baylor on the road at Iowa State here. Line opened up Iowa State laying one and a half. Um, and check this out. Look at all this money on Baylor. 77% of the early money on Baylor as of Monday morning. But yo, look at the books taking on all this Iowa State money. We're almost even now as of Friday night. Um, and, and they react to it. The line moves from one and a half to two. It's up to two and a half now. Very curious to see if this touches three, because that'd be a statement by the books if they're willing to move this line all the way up to a key number like three. So let's cap this game. If you subscribe to this channel, you already know the first step. We're running the numbers through the spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Iowa State minus 4.05. So that's about a point and a half lean on the Cyclones. All right, let's break this matchup down real quick, and we'll start with Baylor. I feel like Baylor fans have to be happy with what they've seen so far. Uh, tough to lose that game on the road at BYU, but... I mean, they played them tough as hell the whole game, took them to double overtime on the road. That's not a bad game for Baylor. Baylor's offense is the part that surprised me the most. Baylor's offense is sitting at 33rd in the country in schedule adjusted offensive efficiency this year. And they're doing it without really asking Blake Shapin to do anything. Even their starting running back was out last game. They got a true freshman that comes in, Richard Reese, wrestles for a buck 50 and three touchdowns in the game. Baylor's gonna have McWilliams, who's 6'1", 215, running the ball. And then they're also gonna have Richard Reese, who's 5'9", 175, running the ball. That combination and the difference in styles there should make Baylor's run game this week even better than it has been. My issue with this Baylor offense certainly isn't the run game, it's Blake Shapin. I don't know if I'm a believer yet. Um, they, like I said earlier, they really haven't asked him to do much. His numbers look fine. He's been fine this year but really hasn't been asked to do much. Last week against Texas State, there was this play uh, where he scrambled out of the pocket to the right and threw a real bad pick on a big fourth and five play. And this game wasn't over yet. It was the third quarter and Baylor was only up 21-7. So it's not like this was in garbage time. Uh, and I can't get that play out of my head. It was disgusting. I had the over in that game, so I was watching pretty closely. But it's one play. I'm not gonna sit here and crucify the guy. Uh, the point I'm making, all I'm saying about this is, I, don't, I still don't know if those two games from last year we saw from Shapin when he took over, I don't know if that was a fluke yet. I don't know if he's able to do that consistently moving forward. And we cer he certainly hasn't proven that to me this year. Now, as far as Iowa State goes, I think we need to tip our hats to Matt Campbell. Uh, this team's sitting at 3-0, including a game where they beat the brakes off a pretty decent Ohio Bobcats team. Score that game was 30-3 at halftime. Keep in mind, this is a Cyclones team that was 128th in returning production from last season. Brees Hall, gone. Brock Purdy, gone. They lost everybody. Matt Campbell's literally working with an entirely new roster. Yo, and it seems like this team hasn't even missed a beat. Hunter Deckers looks comfortable as hell throwing the football. I mean, that kid Brock running the ball, I mean, he looks like Brees Hall. He's even bigger. He's six foot 220. But th this, this Iowa State team, you would have no idea that this is a brand new lineup. And the Iowa State defense, yes, the defense that lost everybody from last year. Get ready for this. Eighth in the country in schedule ad adjusted defensive efficiency, eighth. It goes Georgia, Iowa, Alabama, Clemson, Wisconsin, Michigan, Penn State, and then Iowa State. Brand new defense. Just goes to show you how solid of a program Matt Campbell has built out there in Iowa State. Um, and people think in Baylor, that run game, that they're gonna travel into Ames and just be able to run the football in the Cyclones. I'm not seeing it. Honestly, I'm all in. I'm a Matt Campbell guy. That's who I wanted the Cowboys to hire when they hired Mike McCarthy but that ship has sailed. Um, but I'm back in Matt Campbell here. I'm on the Cyclones. Give me Iowa State minus two and a half, lock it in. If anything changes with this pick, I will let you know on Twitter. Uh, so give me a follow there if you're interested. Also, if you're looking for the final ticket that I do on Saturdays, which is bet of the day, underdogs of the day, I got three parlays of the day this week um, and top seven bets. If you're interested in that stuff, make sure you go to kylekerms.com or download the Sauce Network app. College football Saturday, week four, let's load up. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. Let's have a big Saturday. Let's make some money. I'll talk to you on Twitter.